I think parents should be comfortable with raised expectations because it's we are providing structures for students to be prepared to become citizens, to be prepared. You know, we're in a, currently in an elementary school. When that child gets to middle school and to high school, if we haven't raised expectations in, at an elementary school level, when they get to middle school and high school, when the demands are more difficult for kids, they just won't be prepared. The Common Core State Standards are trying to get to the core of what that kind of knowledge is in the area of mathematics. What do kids really need to understand about the nature of number? What do they need to really understand about ratio and proportion? Not just can I solve a fractions problem or this kind of fraction problems and give you the answer, but do I understand what a fraction is? Do I understand it in terms of relationships among quantities? Now as one looks at the standards, uh, and anybody who's been around the field for a long time, uh, and I always say this as I work with teachers, actually one of the first things we do is say, look at, look at the fourth grade Common Core. Tell me what, what's familiar to you. Well, there's a lot of stuff that's familiar, but I suspect more than anything else, what's different is that now we have actually fewer standards, so there's no doubt that kids ought to have the opportunity to truly understand the mathematics that they're learning. Um, it, there's no reason to rush through 85 topics, because first of all, you have far less than half of that number. You can really, if you're that teacher, you can really dig deep to, to, under, to have kids understand, if you will, how multiplication works and the importance of the distributive property, as opposed to just procedurally doing stuff and getting an answer and have no idea how you got that. Um, which was frankly the case for lots of kids for many decades in this country. So why are we kind of thinking about just what we know about multiplication? What's the whole point? Why are we doing this? One of the strong recommendations from the National Math Advisory Panel, and that report was released in 2008, was around fractions. And what we found was is that kids, frankly, historically, you know, not just now, moms and dads, all of our generations, including mine, never did well with those, those funny numbers, those A over B numbers. Six times one half is three. And yet we also found that, and in that work we surveyed uh, over a thousand uh, teachers of algebra and said, okay, if you had your druthers, what would you, what would you really like kids to know before they get to your algebra course? And the overwhelming, most dominant response was, Make sure they know fractions. The notion of fractions, the fact that kids don't see um, two-thirds as a number, they see it as two over three, and yet they, they need to understand it's, you know, it's 66 percent, it's close to one, it's a bit over a half, it's, it's again, here's the flexibility. With my 10-year-old, I mean, she's in fourth grade now, so she's coming home every day, obviously, with homework, and when she has problems, she'll come to me and ask me to help her. And so knowing that, you know, it's about helping her to come to the answers and not me telling her. So the way that I'm supporting her is, again, trying to help her think through what she already knows and help her really use that information to help her guide where, what, where she's having problems with and not telling her the answer because oftentimes it's what she wants. She wants me just to tell her the answer and just get it over with. Parents definitely have a role in supporting their children's learning. So you want parents to be as supportive and encouraging as possible. It shouldn't be necessary for parents to do the teaching, to stay up for hours at night and have to teach their children things that they think they needed to know in order to solve the problem or do the homework. Because the teacher is doing teaching and you want the parent to be supportive of that, mostly by, frankly, encouraging their student to do the homework and maybe bouncing ideas off or saying, well, tell me about that. Tell me about what you're doing. Explain how you got that answer. And I guess one of the things I sometimes hear uh, when I read the newspaper or critics about the Common Core is, that, well, you know, kids don't have to do multiplication facts. Well, of course they do. But we would really like them to understand what they're doing. And that's the important piece that I think we have to hold on to. Because those, those things together are the, are the bedrock to moving on to higher level mathematics because other numbers will build on the work with whole numbers. Those other numbers, for instance, being fractions and decimals, and that will lead to more work that will then 
come, t come together as they work with number systems in early work with algebra at the middle school level. For example, if you do six times one half is equal to three, three is half of six. Several ways that the number line helps kids conceptualize and understand the size and magnitude of numbers. Um, we're thinking about decimal numbers and we're thinking about its placement on the number line. A lot of kids um, have difficulty with understanding where decimals are on the number line. So he ran seven tenths in one day. So that means from zero, maybe drink some water after. That was one day. They actually even think that these decimals are not even part of the number line, not even part of their thinking. So when you're thinking about students building that understanding of mm, second, first, third grade, when they have their whole number system and they're building that foundation of whole numbers on a number line, they're not thinking about decimal numbers. So connecting what their understanding was of whole numbers and where the decimal numbers are within those whole numbers that they understood, it's just a connection of previous learning. It's a question I ask my grandkids like all every day. Have any homework done? Have any homework done? Because, because frankly, I, th I think that here's a subject, mathematics, that, that needs rehearsal. And I like to, by the way, consider the, the word rehearsal when I think about homework and what we do with homework. Because you know what? If, if you're playing a piano, piano, you're going to rehearse a lot. If you're playing hoops, playing basketball, you're going to rehearse a lot. We call that practice. Uh, and, and so the, the notion of homework sort of does the same thing with regard to mathematics. If you're going to do algebra well, you have to know how to manipulate numbers, whole numbers and fractions quickly and effectively. But if you don't understand what multiplication means, you're completely lost. And I think too many people in math grew up understanding a certain set of procedures or how to do it, but they didn't really understand it. And then they stopped doing math. And I think that contributes to this notion that math is just for some people and not for all people. And I think, you know, as an educator, I think that we need to believe and act on the belief that every kid can learn and do math at high levels. Okay.